Yeah, so thank you for joining me today. And I guess my first question is, what inspired you to enter the archaeological field? Oh, uh, when I was, uh, I don't know how old I was, my uh, great aunt died and my mother was in charge, uh, partly in charge of organizing a yard sale. So where I grew up, uh, when someone died, the house was emptied of everything and was put in the yard mm -hmm. and an auctioneer was contracted to come to auction it all off. And my uh, great, among many other things that my great aunt left, were a couple of boxes of Indian artifacts, Native American artifacts. Mm -hmm. And my mother, my mother took them out of the sale and gave them to me, um, arrowheads and the like. And I was really, really fascinated by them. And I learned everything I could learn at the time about, uh, about Native Americans in my part of Ohio. I mean, I, I'm from Northeastern Ohio. And I still have the arrowheads. And uh, I don't know, something, the idea of uh, being able to uh, learn about the past or things that people made through artifacts really appealed to me. Yeah. So, so I, I think that that's, that's, that's when it started. That's amazing. That's a really cool story. That's an interesting story. So moving on to a little more current thing. So what does like your current field work involve and or just your current work in general? My current work in general. Well, I'm uh, uh, I'm not retired. I'm uh, you know fairly ancient as these things go. I'm seventy two, going on seventy three, and as I was just telling someone today, I was just telling a colleague today, we had lunch in uh, in Kolonaki, that I uh, you know like seven years past when I could have retired, but. Uh, so my current, basically what I, what I do today is uh, I, work, I work a lot with graduate students at the university. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have a big graduate program. Uh, not all of whom study archeology, span but uh, the majority do. And uh, I work with them. And um, I also have been involved in uh, field research projects, in particular the project at uh, the excavations at Pilos, which uh, have been part of our university and our department's life since, since 1939, when my professor's professor discovered the Palace of Nestor at Pilos. Mm -hmm. so, um, that that's something I never imagined I'd be doing. I uh, I guess I did imagine I'd be doing field work from a very early age, but I started. I worked in the uh, Cycladic Islands, on the island of Kea, uh, when I was a student, and then I worked in the I worked on the island of Milos with a British project, and then I ended up in the Peloponnesus uh, at the area around the Maya. But I, I never really had any intention to end up in Pilos. That was kind of an accident. Uh, and I especially didn't have any intention of, uh, of digging. I was more interested in surface archaeology. But uh, anyway, I ended up digging. Uh, my, uh, my wife and my co-director now in Pilos, uh, Sharon Stocker, talked to me into into starting excavations, restarting excavations around the Palace of Nestor. Um, we, so that's, that's what I do. I, I spent a huge amount of time uh, working on publications that, uh, that have been generated from, uh, from our research at the Palace of Nestor. Hmm. Although at this very minute, I'm working on the publication of excavations from the excavations of a Greek temple in Albania that we that we explored in the early two thousands mm. um, near a uh, colony of uh, Apollonia or Apollonia uh, in central Albania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So you, you were talking about how you're focused on like writing something. And I've seen that you've done a lot of writing or contributing to journals and books. So could you talk a little bit about that process, like what it's like for you as the author? Sure. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's probably, it's stressful. <laughs> it's uh, archaeological field work is also stressful, but it's stressful in a different way. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's more outdoorsy. It's, uh, you know, you have, uh, uh, it's very team focused. Yeah. But when it comes down to publishing, it's much, it can be much more solitary. And that's where you uh, really put, need to put your nose to the grindstone and also submit yourself to, uh, you know, to the scrutiny and to the judgment of others, which itself can be, uh, can be pretty, uh, uh, pretty, uh, be pretty difficult unless you have a fair amount of confidence in what you're doing in yourself. So, uh, and it's a particular kind of expository writing. That that's required. It's not, uh, you know, it's, it's very different from journalistic writing or from from uh, writing a novel or a short story. It's uh, it's uh, it's descriptive, yet at the same time, it's uh, uh, it's descriptive in a particular way. And what you're trying to do is make. Uh, is to present information, lots of information, in a uh, in a coherent way, so that other people can use it. Mm. And one of the big chain, one of the big challenges of all that also is uh, that because archaeological fieldwork is so team focused, you uh, need to get you need to get a whole team of people to do their job to write up their reports and then you need to uh, integrate those into into some coherent uh, into some coherent whole mm -hmm. and just getting other people to do what you need them to do in a timely manner is itself requires a special kind of leadership yeah i'm sure yeah well moving on to a little bit about um what i'm what i really what I'm really focused on with this project is like cultural preservation, right? And I've seen that you've done a lot of field work yourself. And could you talk a little bit about what you and your teams do to ensure that you preserve the culture that you dig up or find? Sure. Um, I can. The, um, we can, uh, let me start by saying we can only do so much. Yes, of because, course. Um, because, um, it's not really the way that the uh, that the uh, system is constructed in in Greece and in other countries of which I work. It's not really part of our responsibility. Mm. That is the responsibility for preserving archaeological sites and material from archaeological sites falls into the bailiwick of the of the Greek Archaeological Service, mm. which is part of the Ministry of Culture and Sports today. So we can't just do what we feel like doing. Mm. Uh, we can make suggestions, we can help, but we can't just decide we're going to do something or to present our, way, our, our results in a particular way or see them preserved in a particular way. Uh, that's a to do to uh, to embark on a, any kind of program of restoration to make decisions about what to do or what not to do subsequent to excavations or while excavations are in progress uh, requires uh, negotiations and proposals to uh, to particular branches of the archaeological service. Uh, who need to give us their approvals. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, we have a, uh, we uh, have worked for quite a while with a proposal to uh, put a, uh, 
to put a shelter over the uh, grave of the Griffin warrior at Pilos. And we've worked with conservation architects in order to do that, uh, who are themselves, uh, in our particular case, uh, a, large, uh, a large percentage of the people we work with on our team are, are Greek, and that's true of our conservation architects too. So we've worked with uh, the woman who was the foremost conservation architect in Greece, Clary Palivou, who was professor at the University of Thessaloniki. And working with her and a colleague of hers named Yorgos Ninos. Uh, so we have a plan, we have a portfolio uh, describing sort of structure that we would like to see used to present the grave of the Griffin Warrior. But at this point, we're only really at the beginning. We need to submit that. We've been working on this for a couple of years. So now we need, we need to submit it for criticism to the uh, Greek Ministry of Culture. And then finally, we need, propose, we need the approval of the Central Archaeological Council of Greece. And then even then, it doesn't, we're not done, right? Because then, then it's the matter of who's going to pay for it. Yeah. And that, that's a whole nother can of worms, finding, finding the money. Mm, I see. Yeah, it's difficult. But pers personally to you, how important would you say that culture, preserving culture is? I know there's a lot of difficulties behind it. But to you personally, do you think it's important? Oh, of course I do. No, no doubt, of, no doubt about it. I mean, one uh, one thing that we are involved in right now is remodeling our local, our local museum, and we've we played a big role in that, uh, increasing the scale of the museum, both to present material uh, to the general public, but also to preserve material from the last hundred years of, of excavation from us and by us and by other people. So yeah, if, if it isn't just a matter of, I mean, there, there are a number of different audiences who need to be concerned with cultural preservation. There's obviously there's, you know, there's the general public in the broadest sense, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. You know, people curious about the past. There are, um, there, are more specialized audiences, local audiences of historians, for instance, and uh, uh, school teachers, and uh, local guides who yeah. in, engage with the uh, material on a regular basis. And then there's the need to preserve it for future generations of archaeologists and art historians and. Uh, and scientists of various sorts who will be able to extract more information from the material that we've excavated that we've been able to with the limited set of resources and techniques and skills available to us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I was all the questions, so I'm just gonna stop the recording here.